I want to discuss the TCP fast open feature in the TCP stack. How about we jump into it? What's going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and I discuss backend engineering and sometimes network concepts that affect backend engineering performance, such as TCP fast open. So if you like this kind of content, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and uh, let's just jump into it. All right, guys. When you send your fetch command, your XHR, your request, HTTP request from browser, your Python application, your JavaScript application to a server, the first thing that happens if you're using HTTP2 and below, we establish a TCP connection, right? And that TCP connection, there is a negotiation that happened between the client and server to agree on the sequence number of the packets so that we can order those packets if they arrive out of order so that we can control congestion control so so that we can avoid duplicate packets all that stuff so it's very important to label these packets and how do we server a server and the client agree on those sequence and those sequence numbers they handshake it says hey client say send says send this is my sequence number server will say okay i acknowledge your sin and here is my sin by the way this is my sequence number and then the client says yo call awesome i'm gonna acknowledge your sequence your sin request and now we can start talking and now after these three uh requests packets sent right this round trip now we can start sending them information. However, this is slow, right? To open a TCP connection is expensive. And, and let's say the send request failed. I don't know. Something lost, the packet lost in the ocean or, or uh, it got corrupted. Anything can happen, right? A conjunction control, it slowed down. It, it got dropped. One firewall in the middle box, it dropped it. So it can go even slower. So if, if you're doing a curl request, just doing a curl HTTP, I don't know, google.com, right? You're doing all that stuff. You're opening a TCP connection, you're doing three hardware share, and then you're sending the get request after the TCP connection has been opened. So it is slow. Smart people said, wait a second. We're doing any way in the sin we're sending a packet. Why don't we send data while we are sending that send request, that's first one. And by the way, guys, I talked about three-way handshake. Check out this video if you wanna learn more about it. So yeah, can I send data? Can I send my GET request in the first send? And the answer is yes. However, <laughs> to avoid problems, the server actually need to trust the client beforehand, right? So how does this happen? Meet the TFO cookie or the TCP fast open cookie. Yes, cookies do exist in the TCP stack. Who knew? I didn't know that, to be honest, right? So let's revise this scenario with the TCP fast open option. Assuming the server is smart enough to understand TCP fast open, and the client is also smart enough and sophisticated enough, like Curl, Curl has uh, an option to do uh, fast open. I'm gonna show it in the screen right now. But let's run the scenario again. You are about to send a get request and there is no TCP connection, right? So you're gonna establish a TCP connection. What do we do the first one? We establish, uh, we try to do a send, right? And in the sin, if you both support TCP fast open, here's what will happen. You get a brand new connection. The client will say, here's a sin. And by the way, I want to communicate with fast open. See? So the server will say, oh, here's one advanced client. Sexy. So the server will say, okay, here's your SYNAC. And by the way, I generated a special cookie for you, Mr. Client. And here it is. It's going to add it in the SYNAC. So we still didn't send any data, to be honest, because we don't know if the server supports it. But now we got it. If the server doesn't support it, it's going to ignore it, basically, that request to open the TCP, if has to open. Now I got the cookie. It's a special cryptographic uh, 
cipher that allows the client server to, to recognize the client in the future request. And now that obviously the client now can just acknowledge this and then finish the handshake. So we didn't do a fast open the first time. However, we can close this connection. And if I want to establish a new TCP connection, this is very useful in HTTP 1.1, not much in HTTP 2.2, 2.2, what the hell is that? Not much in HTTP 2, to be honest, because we don't open that many TCP connection in HTTP 2. It's just, that's really just the case with HTTP 1.1, because we're, we can only send one request in parallel in, in a given TCP connection. So we, all, we keep opening TCP connections a lot. Never mind. So now I have the cookie, that stinking cookie. And now the server, the client, if it wants to establish a brand new Git request on a brand new TCP connection, here's what it does. It says, okay, hey, Monsieur Serva, je m'appelle client and I want to communicate with you. All right. And by the way, here's my sin, and here's something you didn't you didn't anticipate. Here's my fast open cookie, right? TCP fast open cookie. Do you recognize it? The server will say, "Oh, look at that! That is sexy." So the server will look at this. It's like, "Ooh, okay, I I'm gonna validate the cookie. Yes, it is for that particular IP address. I know you." And here's the thing, I forgot to mention one thing. So the, sir, the client sends the sin and it sends the cookie and it also sends what? It sends the stinking git request in the sin. It sends the git slash all that stuff in the same packet, obviously, assuming it's gonna fit in one packet, right? So it's gonna send. The sin will have the sin, which is the sequence number, and it's gonna have the cookie fast open and it's gonna have the get request if you're doing get request. If you're doing post, then it's a different story. It's the same thing. All of this data into one round trip. Oh, just one request. So the server receives this, validated the cookie. It says, "You okay? I know you. Now I know you. Let's look at the data. Now it actually looks at the data part and it looks okay. There's a get request." Let me take that good request and I'm going to deliver it to the application. And before I do that, I'm going to acknowledge that sin and I'm going to acknowledge not only the sin, I'm going to acknowledge also the data because I have data. And if the client now receives the acknowledgement and says, okay, the acknowledgement is not just plus one, it's the plus the whole content, the length. So it's, whoa, the server is smart enough. And just like that, this the client now didn't receive the response, by the way. It receives the acknowledgement that the server actually received the request to get for the get request. Now the server immediately after sending that will deliver the, the get request to the application and it will start, I don't know, reading from disk or going to the database, reading the content and then it can immediately, before the three-way handshake, we didn't finish the three-way handshake yet it can immediately respond with a, with just an act with the results. It says, hey, here's push. Here's a push for you. Here's an attaboy. And then the client will immediately get this. Oh, oh awesome. I'm going to acknowledge you and get the results. And you can add like a monkey wrenches in the middle. Let, let's say if the client didn't actually receive an act that a sin act, which had the... Um, the data of the server, right? Uh, that didn't acknowledge the client's data, it will retransmit the data again in the ACK portion of it, right? So just to save some. So TCP fast open, definitely supported by curl and some other clients. I'm not sure about the browsers though. Really, to be honest, this is not a problem in HTTP 3 and quick, right? Because we're gonna have a, uh, we have UDP, right? We have logical connection. I don't even know how it's gonna look like, to be honest, right? Definitely not a problem in HTTP 2 because we have one beautiful TCP connection and we can multiplex stuff, right? So yeah, be aware. If you're building an application in HTTP 2, just have one connection and add as many streams as you want, assuming your backend actually supports that many streams right and yeah that's the idea and then tcp fast open pretty cool feature and uh 
especially with HTTP 1.1. I'm not sure with HTTP 2. So let, let me know, guys, what do you think about this feature? Is it good? Is it useless? It comes with its own problems, but I'm not going to discuss it. I'm going to reference the RFC. Read it for yourself. Let us have a discussion. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you like these kind of talking head uh, discussions of these networking topics because most of these anything i discuss here usually affect back in engineering sometimes they affect front end engineering right like this case it actually affects front end engineering right because if you think about it now if a front end engineer understand how tcp fast open works they can use lazy loading instead of eager loading right because because we discussed like in slow start, TCP slow start, which has nothing to do with fast open, by the way, right? The TCP slow start is the congestion control after the handshake. You want to, as much as possible, pre-warm those TCP connections and eagerly load them. Whenever you have this information, have it loaded, make it running. And then when, when a fresh request comes, we, we have a warm connection. And why warm is like already started, right? That's, so that's the eager loading. And the lazy loading where you can take advantage of TCP fast open so that you can not start any connections. That's save some memory. Good, goody, 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 right? And then when a request comes in, like a user clicks a button, you can fast open the connection assuming you have acquired a cookie from the server and that the server actually supports fast open. So yeah, it can be useful. I'm still on the edge though. Let's have a discussion. What do you guys think? Engineers, let's have some discussion. Network engineers, what do you guys think about this feature? Front-end engineers, back-end engineers, let's have discussions and Let's tear this thing apart and see if it's useful or not. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome, guys.